Welcome back, YouTubers, to another Friday Night Smackdown with us, the British Fist. We are British, we are here. I am Mr. Parkin, wearing a V-neck once again. This may be the third video in a row I've wore this shirt, but eh. And this guy sitting next to me, what the hell are you doing? But I don't really care. You're NJ. <laughs> What's up? Subscribe up above, like this video, of course, if you will, and comment your thoughts on SmackDown down in that comment section below. And do it, please do it before NJ gets crazier than he is right now. <laughs> I actually, contact us. The links, the good talks, below. Okay. Well, to be honest, we started off our show kind of like SmackDown started, didn't we? Um, with something different. We started off, well, we started off with a video package of the Barrett Orton main event from last week when he got thrown down the stairs, Orton's injury update, etc. And even with Orton not being there, it was good because it led on to what's happening yeah. late in the night. Yeah, but to start off the show, very refreshing for a show, we start the show off with not a promo, but a match. A match which has been hyped up from last week, Cody Rhodes versus Booker T for the Intercontinental Championship. What a great way to start off the show this was. This really got me into SmackDown this week. They're having a good opener with the, I know it's a title match, but it was a good opener, because obviously, they've been in the opening for the past few yeah. weeks, so having them have the open again, I liked it. Yeah, and it's just nice to have a match to start off the show, isn't it? Very kind true. of, it's easier to get into when there's a match, just something different. Um, we know that the match itself was, I'd say, somewhat good. We know Booker T is kind of limited, but he worked more psychology into this match, which is why I thought it was pretty good. You know, guys like Booker T have more, you know, have more experience and what they lack in wrestling skill, like Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair used to, they make up for an in-ring psychology, which is, which is needed in modern day wrestling. And as Michael Cole was saying, it's the vintage book T. He did a lot of his old school yep. stuff, so it actually brought his side into it. And yes, it was more working his way through the match. Yep. So I like that. But essentially, my boy, yes, that's right, my boy, the Intercontinental Champion, the man who resurrected the old classic IC belt, wins the match with a beautiful disaster. It was a good match, wasn't it? And the crowd was into it as well. Booker T really does well getting the crowd on his side, doesn't he? Well, the way the match was going, it was good both sides. I liked it because they made it both look good. Yep. Booker T, their skills, and Cody Rhodes, the chat looking strong. But it was after the match. It gave you the feeling that it's going to be finished now. Because yep. Booker T was all like, thank you, thank you, thank mm. you to everyone. And I think it's a good way to finish it. A pay-per-view match. I would have had it maybe at Royal Rumble, personally. But then again, I'm not too fussed about this because... After the match, we got that segment with um, him and Dustin Rhodes backstage. Of course, we know Dustin Rhodes is Goldust. Talking about how he's more going to be more of a success than his dad. Oh, what a charismatic individual. And it's kind of hinting at a Goldust Rhodes match, maybe at, a, maybe at the Royal Rumble, which is some, some sort of continuance. Well, for the match to finish and then them to continue with yep. Cody Rhodes for a bit longer, leading into another feud, which they did quite nice, mm. had adding Dustin backstage... I thought it's actually giving you a feeling that something's going to be there in the near future. Yeah, which is yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? You've gone from one nice. view to another in a nice, in a nice orderly fashion. So that was a good way, a very good way to start off SmackDown this week. Mm -hmm. um, we had Santino coming in saying that he's the new assistant GM and the general manager of uh, SmackDown, and then we get Teddy Long announcing that it's going to be Drew versus Santino later tonight. If Santino wins, he is the assistant general manager, and if Drew wins, Long will consider not firing him tonight. So we had a match made. Um, just a shame about the result of the match, but again, the thing backstage. is, we had Ryder who was, of course, left his job because he's all depressed that he lost his yeah, championship. <laughs> so, yeah, he got all depressed about that. He brought in Santino, so Santino's a reasonable replacement, and then it led on to this match, which. Yeah, we'll get onto that later. Um, we got a Royal Rumble 2008 video package of John Cena's return. I like the fact, although I don't like John Cena's return, obviously. I like the fact they're at least showing these video packages during the show. It gets you kind of in the mood for the Royal Rumble. They showed two of these. They showed the not the first one again. They've shown that twice now, but at least they're showing classic Royal Rumble moments with Jim, Jim Axel, Jim Dunn winning as well. Well, I think it's showing the Royal Rumble, giving that hype up, because obviously they're not really doing much mentioning it apart from late in the night where we'll get to that. But having these video packages does give you the pin of a Royal Rumble. Yes, and we had a backstage segment with Daniel Bryan talking to AJ. And all I can say here is... Stay away from my woman, Daniel Bryan. I know you're the whatever weight champion and you think you're fucking God and everything, but stay the fuck away from my woman. The thing Next. is, AJ doesn't think, well, she says she does, but she doesn't think that Big Show, uh, Daniel Bryan could beat Big Show. <laughs> but I could beat Daniel Bryan. I could. AJ, I could beat Daniel Bryan. I really could. Um, the cap comes off. I put caps in people's asses. I'll just put that there. Next, we had an over-the-top rope challenge. This was very random and a bit... Ugh. Hornswoggle and Heath Slater. Basically, we had Hornswoggle eliminating Heath Slater. And throughout this whole match, I was just thinking, ah, this is so stupid. It ties into the Royal Rumble, 
but not in a way where I think to myself, oh great, fantastic, you know what I mean? It's just ah, so frustrating. Okay, for the first Smackdown of the new year, I'm looking at this and thinking... Lonzo Ball is not going to win the Rumble. No, and it's a match that doesn't really excite people mm. for the first show of the new year. Yeah, but we had Justin Gabriel come out and do the 450 splash on Heath Slater. Where that leads them to, I don't really know. But at least Justin Gabriel gets on TV. And considering the fact that he's been pretty much jobbing and shit the last couple of weeks, it wasn't that bad to see him on TV again. Just a really stupid segment, personally, I think. I think if they... I know it's only just begun, but if they're making that become a eventual feud, I guess it's something else going on SmackDown. It's early days, so we don't really know what's happening yet. Ted DiBiase versus Hunico, who comes out with Camacho, a.k.a. Donny Marlo from SCW. Um, before the match with Hunico and Camacho, not invited to the DiBiase posse party, homie. Like, what's going on here, homie? I don't know, homie. And they're coming out on that low rider bicycle. It's kind of stupid, but at least it's something unique, I guess, for these for those two. Yeah. Is that all you got to say? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, then. Uh, we had Hunico focusing on the arm throughout the match, and he wins with this kind of submission pinning combination um, in three minutes. Um, your thoughts on okay, this? Okay, there's two things I want to say about this. The way it finished was good, because it was something like, ooh, a good way of him winning the match. Mm -hmm. The only problem is, Teddy Biazzi was meant to be in a feud with Jinder, being a big character, so for him to go into a, a match, only for it to go three minutes, was kind of disappointing in my eyes. Um, I, either this is filler, or this is the beginning of a Hunico Teddy Biazzi feud or something, I don't know, I'm just trying to think outside the box here. Well, if it is their feud, to be honest, Teddy Biazzi was against Jinder, that went nowhere. Now he's against, so I don't really know, it's just really moving about a bit too quickly. Yeah, I guess DBS is in that kind of position where you can't really give him a pay-per-view match because he's not really there yet, so you kind of have to give, it, give him filler feuds on TV. Kind of like they're doing with Sheamus at the moment, but we'll get onto that next. Yes. <laughs> because next we get Barrett coming out, showing us footage of last week, talking about Randy Orton's injury, injury and he says that Orton is finished. <laughs> 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 I, I don't think so, brother. <laughs> <laughs> he also talks about the Royal Rumble and how the hometown hero will not there and no one can stop him. This was some good stuff because it ties into the Rumble. Well, Barrett being Don and Mike, saying how he's not in Pratt or finished the Viper and all that, is building his character, making him sound like a dominant, strong guy. Mm. But obviously, we all know that Orton's going to come back eventually. He'll come back and win the Royal Rumble, won't he? We know that now, because then why else would they mention that in a promo? Just saying. Hometown, Orton, mm. would make sense, but I'm hoping it will come to a sad ending for Orton. <sighs> Hopefully, it's already come to a sad ending. I just don't want a happy beginning. Um, and then we get Sheamus coming out. Now, we know that Sheamus is replacing Orton in the house show, so we know these two are kind of maybe going to be facing off each other in a feud, possibly fill a few people into the Rumble. Uh, Sheamus comes out talking about that it'll be a, he'll be a major problem for Barrett in the Rumble. And to be honest, those are the two picks I have. So, yeah, I mean, I thought that kind of that made sense. And then you had Jinder Mahal coming out. It's like, Ugh, why? Well, with Sheamus coming out, again, two great people on mic there, you know, having mm. their say about the Rumble. Because them two are the ones you mentioned yeah. in Rumble recently. So for them to have their face-to-face -face was good. When Jinder came out, I thought, you had a good segment there. Why add in Jinder? Yeah, and Jinder comes out. They brawl, and then Barrett and Mahal beat on Sheamus. Barrett ends up on top over Sheamus. And then you have Jinder Mahal putting the camel clutch on Sheamus. It's like, wow, like what the fuck? Could you not just have ended with Barrett on top over Sheamus? Wouldn't that have been a lot more impactful? Rather than having Jinder Mahal do the camel clutch on Sheamus, although it did lead to a match next week that they announced. I personally would have had Jinder come out or just stuck to yeah. Sheamus and Barrett, maybe done something there for it until Orn came back. But maybe now with this Jinder and Sheamus, it'll be a filler thing for a few weeks, yeah, but yeah. nothing important. At least we've got a match, a match now announced for next week, even though we're not really looking forward to it. At least they're trying to do something for next week. Um, I'll just say that as a positive from the segment. Um, yes. Santino versus Drew McIntyre. Oh. Oh, this, this, this segment frustrated me. I'm not going to lie here. No, um, it was oh. kind of a random match, and obviously it was good that Drew McIntyre was on top throughout the match. Because then he gets beat with the point. Cobra. It's just such a joke. It, it really is. Especially for Drew McIntyre, you should be squashing the fuck out of someone like Drew McIntyre. It's just like, what? You know, why are they doing that? You know, it's just a joke. Either, either they're trying to put Drew McIntyre rock bottom, or they're just going to get rid of him after next week because we find out that if Drew loses next week, he's going to be gone. And it's kind of just like, it, just, it was a joke to me. I don't know why they're doing it like that. It's just ridiculous. No, I found it kind of disappointing. Yes, I was in, it was intended to see Santino, not, don't get me wrong, but for Santino to go against Drew McIntyre, Drew McIntyre to lose to Santino, if he does win his match next week, I wouldn't really care because he's lost to Santino. Yeah. Uh, it just was a real joke segment for me. What the fuck is it they doing with Drew McIntyre? It's fucking ridiculous. Um, but next we got some tag action. 
Abby Cohen Primo versus Air Boom. This match went about four minutes. Um, you know, it was a good tag match, I guess. I guess this is going to tie into the Rumble at some point as they do the tag symbol after they won. Well, with there not being much tag teams, they yeah. can do what they've given. With this match, even though they're just because they've given these tag teams, I did enjoy this match. I did think the way it built up towards the end was nicely done. And you had the heels on top, which I liked. Yeah, I mean, Epico moves Primo from the air boom to allow uh, to allow Epico or someone to go uh, to allow Primo to get the victory. So the challenge, I guess, the challengers are looking strong. They're probably going to get a match at the Rumble, and I think if they, that does happen, they'll probably change the titles. I mean, they've been having for long enough, and who really gives a shit at the moment? The tag, tag, tag team division is defunct, really, isn't it? In WWE, it is. Um, we then have an interview with Big Show talking about how confident he is and with confidence levels being high. He's against Daniel Bryan. But then we have Daniel Bryan coming in, being all arrogant and sarcastic, making fun of Big Show. And I'm like, fucking hell! WWE is trying to give him some character. This is actually good. He's actually being all, you know, actually feel like he can win. Ah! Don't get your hand off me, NJ. Yeah. Guess and off. Walk away. <laughs> but at least, at least they're giving Daniel Bryan some sort of character and they're actually like sort of Making him, you know, resist Big Show and actually stand up for the f him fucking self because him as a vanilla fucking baby face just isn't isn't working at the moment. And they might be they might be turning him heel. I like the confidence Dane Bryan's given us, but I'm thinking maybe Big Show could have been done a bit better against Dane Bryan. But again, we'll lead on to the map. It hypes up their main event match. So yeah. I mean, it was good. I just enjoyed the fact that Danny Bryan actually had some fucking character and it wasn't just a bland yeah. vanilla baby face in this one. But next we had Natalia versus Tamina. Um, one thing I liked about this segment, the match wasn't great, but one thing I liked about this segment is the way they showed their past. You got Natalia there who I believe is the daughter of Anvil Neidhart and then you got Tamina who's the daughter or something of Jimmy Snooker. I'm not sure of the family, there's a bubble there for some reason. I'm not sure of the family connections, but at least they're showing their past, which is good because it makes them feel more like a bigger deal. They're showing them their past and I did like this about the segment. Again, with these two characters, Natalia, she needs a character build again mm. now she's been dropped. Tamina, well, the future could change for her, so having these is definitely doing good for yep. her, and hopefully it will last. It makes the segment a lot better, in my opinion. Even though the match wasn't very good, I still felt to myself, well, that was a good way of introducing um, Natalia and Tamina. Tamina essentially wins with Samoa Drop and Splash after two minutes. Um, it wasn't exactly the best match. Natalia is still losing, but I guess at least, at least with Natalia losing, at least they're building up Tamina. Well, not rather than someone like Alicia Fox, who's kind of irrelevant. At least they're building someone new up like Tamina in this segment. Well, to be honest, the way I would have had this match is, yes, I would have had Tamina win, but I would have had Natalia's character build a bit more, so the win that Tamina gets would have been a bit more bigger. Yeah. She's actually defeated someone who's bigger than Natalia, but sadly, Natalia's been on a losing streak, which is disappointing. Mm, and we still haven't really seen Beth Phoenix for a while now. I know she's got that shiner, but that's the Divas champion, at least on we TV. Need to. We need to. Um, Anyway, we'll get to our main event now. Main event, of course, this was hype from last week. Daniel Bryan versus Big Show for the World Heavyweight Championship. Now, the first person we saw in this segment was Mark Henry. He came out, was cutting on commentary, and the best thing about it, I love this, someone in the crowd obviously happened to me said, you jump over that barricade and see what happens when you come over here. I fucking love Mark Henry when he's doing this shit. <laughs> Again, he's characters of him being a heel now, not a face. He's actually out there more and actually... Good at doing what he's doing. So. You talk, see what happens. Shut up! I right, see what I mean. It's good stuff, isn't it? Um, the match itself went only went about six and a half minutes. It's very short for a title match, but at least Daniel Bryan in this match was booked a bit better than I thought. He actually at times looked like he could win, didn't he? Which was kind of strange. Well, the way the WWE allowed Big Show to actually take what uh, Daniel Bryan was giving him, mm. it did make Big Show look okay. Maybe not as strong as he would do in other matches, mm. but it was to. Daniel Bryan's standards sort of Yeah, thing. so I, I thought the match was good. I, I did enjoy the way they at least worked it to at least not just be a squash job like I thought they were going to do. So at least they booked Daniel Bryan to be a legit champion guy to Big Show just by the finish. And that was Mark Henry saying he doesn't mind who he faces. He mm -hmm. was going through the whole match. Whenever someone got a, almost a pin, he would say, I don't mind facing Mark uh, uh, Big Show. Whoever. I don't mind facing Daniel Bryan. Again, it was... <laughs> Hyped up something there. Lillian Garcia's hot. I'll just say that right now. Um, Daniel Bryan gets the win after getting himself disqualified. Um, I believe what we're seeing here is maybe a Daniel Bryan heel turn um, with the way they've done his character. And I think that's probably the best way to go, in my opinion, because as a villain, a baby face, he just isn't working. So turning him heel could be the best thing to do for a guy like Daniel Bryan right now. Two things. Number one, I would prefer Big Show back to be a heel. And the second thing is, the way Daniel Bryan won that, I really thought, Kind of wiggled your way out of that match 
when you could have just maybe had a Mark Henry interference mm. instead of you just getting out the ring going... Huh, huh, huh. Well, it makes him a cowardly heel, doesn't it? Which is essentially what he's going to be playing from now on. I just found this funny, though. You had Daniel Bryan celebrate the win, etc., which is all fine. He's a heel now, I believe. I think he's a heel. I don't really know. But have you noticed how after the match, they're still focused on Mark Henry and Big Show, which leads me to believe that there might be a triple threat match at the Royal Rumble. Would you think the triple threat match would work here with the, all these three being kind of involved? Well, again, if they do have a triple threat, it does make Daniel Bryan have competition, hmm. which he needs, because he needs to build up his character to be a strong champion. So having against two real big guys could be an interesting match. Yeah, interestingly, I mean... You know, so I mean, it, that might be a good match to have at Royal Rumble. I mean, whether you have Danny Bryan win or lose, this new heel turn could at least spark some interest in his character rather than that vanilla baby face he's been for the last couple of weeks. Um, so the main event, essentially, you had Daniel Bryan retain his title, hype that maybe a triple threat match, and Daniel Bryan essentially turning heel, I think. So uh, it was a good main event, I thought. I did think this, even though I thought it could have gone a bit longer, at least it was still a decent main event and achieved what it needed to achieve. In the ring action, I liked because it went big show, mm. showing some strength. Working across to make Daniel Bryan look strong. It's just the, uh, the result at the end I just mm. didn't like. Yeah, at least it leads us into Royal Rumble, though, kind of like Ziggler Punk did. Maybe, who really knows, they might announce it next week. Um, So, NJ, what are your overall thoughts on SmackDown this week? What did you think of the show? Good opener, a good tag match. The main event, well, it gave us some indication mm. of what could be coming, but I just... Didn't really enjoy the SmackDown that much. Um, I will say this. The opener, like Andrew said, was very good. I think the main event achieved something. And they've actually done something with Daniel Bryan. You very what very little they've done. Um, you know, it just was an average show to me. I mean, there wasn't really anything really... Considering, the, especially seen as the fact they got hyped as well. There was a lot of filler in this show. Um, coming into the Royal Rumble, kind of expected. Um, so... There were a couple of good segments tonight, but nothing really to make me put this show in the category of, you know, good show. I thought it was just an average C, C-plus show, personally. Well, I'm going to give it a C-plus because it did have quite a bit of rumble mention. Video packages, the Seamus and the Barrett. the Barrett thing, the main event bill, so I'm going to give it a C-plus. Okay, then. You've heard the thoughts on SmackDown from us, the British Fist. Okay, You've heard the thoughts also from Mr. Parkin, the man with the cap, and, of course, NJ. What up? And get your thoughts on SmackDown down in that comment section below. We want to hear your thoughts, opinions. This is a video discussion forum. Let's get discussing on this show. NJ, you're the main event of this show. Just means you've got to end it. Thank you very much. What I'll say, people, is leave your thoughts on SmackDown because we would like to answer them as quick as we can, get to know what your thoughts are. And that has been it from Mr. Parkin and me, NJ, the British Fist. Till next time, people. Goodbye.